All right. Uh, shall we? Are you ready? Um. Yeah. 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 So. Uh, we have our next speaker, Selvi Nuriyeve, who is going to talk about distributed uh, ML workflow in multi-node GPU realm. So over to you, Selvi. Uh, thank you, Surya. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Selvi, and today I will be presenting on distributed training across uh, multiple GPU nodes. Uh, so before I dive in into multi-node and all that, like first I wanted to cover a little bit about the difference between CPUs and GPUs. Uh, so CPUs, as you guys can see here, they're actually composed of um, just a few cores, but with lots of cache memory. Um, so CPUs are generally like, they're basically optimized to uh, switch between tasks really fast. So if you have any kind of serial processing, they're actually really good at that. Versus a GPU, on the other hand, it ha it's composed of like hundreds of small cores um, that actually can handle um, simultaneous, like it can handle uh, threads simultaneously. Um, so they're actually, um, what's called, they um, accelerate the computer for a number of specific tasks that require a high degree of parallelism, such as like um, linear algebra um, tasks, like for example, metric ar arithmetic or floating point calculations um, or similar tasks. So essentially what GPUs are great for because of that, they're great for games and AI ML. So in case, for example, you have a machine learning model uh, that you want to run training on like uh, hundreds of images, you can actually process hundreds of images simultaneously, which uh, makes it great for AI ML area. And that's what I'm going to be focusing on here too. So as we all know, the data sets and the models are actually getting bigger and bigger, right? Like we're having growing data all around the world and which at the end requires more powerful and more efficient GPUs. Um, so the need for that is rapidly increasing. So for example, you have a, a GPU on one computer, or on one computer or, um, and then you have a machine learning model training that you wanna run. However, uh, quickly enough, it becomes not sufficient for you. So what you would do is you would actually buy another GPU and sell on your computer. And again, like at some point as your data sets are getting bigger or your models are getting more complex, it quickly becomes, um, the, the training starts running uh, a lot slower, right? So which needs um, more advanced GPUs. However, buying advanced GPUs sometimes can be very costly. Um, and if you wanna add more GPUs, for example, in the same machine, at some point you're gonna hit that hardware limitation, right? At some point, like the machines can only take so many uh, GPUs at the same time. So what you would want to do essentially at some point is utilize GPUs on the other machines, right? And or, or other nodes. So essentially what this talk is about is how to utilize all the resources that we have available for us for the training, uh, for machine learning training. And similarly for inference as well, this can be done. Um, so in this talk, I'm going to kind of more like demonstrate how we can utilize several machines with GPUs for a machine learning training. So now that we have figured out what we're gonna do on the hardware side, the next question is like, well, okay, where should I run my AI ML workflows? And a good answer to that is actually containers and Kubernetes. And you might be asking why, and it's because it's agile, as we all know, it responds very quickly. Um, it's portable. So if you, for example, run your model on a data center and then you want to kind of like move it to the edge or public cloud it's very easily portable it's also flexible so no matter what kind of ai ml environment you might want uh, that will be available to you whenever you need it and also it's scalable so it's um, easily scalable um, and highly like it's available as solution stack and that brings us down to Open Data Hub. So Open Data Hub is an open source project. It's a meta project that has multiple open source technologies in one place for specifically for data, data science and machine learning pipelines on OpenShift, right? So it's basically essentially all the tools that you might want as a data scientist or a data engineer or a DevOps engineer, they'll be all in one place in a place called Open Data Hub, which runs on OpenShift. So it's essentially an AI as a service uh, platform. So um, here's an example of um, how AI ML workflow starts, right? It starts usually with prepping and ETLing the data into data lake or, or storage uh, by data engineers and making that data available or accessible for data scientists, right? And what data scientists is gonna do in the next phase is it's gonna, uh, uh, they're gonna do the model development, which includes like feature selection, model creation, training and validation and so on and so forth. And after that is done, the next phase was obviously would, would be the deployment of the model, right? And that would be done by DevOps engineers. 
And obviously, this is not a static phase. This is more like cyclical, where um, it's a cycle of monitoring and optimizing and serving. So essentially, what I'm trying to say is that AI ML area in general is, is a very tight collaboration between data engineers, data science, and DevOps. And ideally, all of them have their own applications that they want to use or the tools. And ideally, you want them to collaborate on one platform, right? So, And that's what essentially Data Hub provides, Open Data Hub. All of this, your favorite tools in one place for for a data engineer and data science and DevOps where you can tightly collaborate with each other. So, for example, the engineer might want to have a Cloudera or Apache Hive. On the other hand, the data scientist might prefer Jupyter Notebooks and like with PyTorch and uh, use some Tableau and, and DevOps might want the Grafana and Prometheus to kind of monitor their um, the model and also use Apache Airflow and stuff like that. So um, Open Data Hub provides all of that in one place and it's um, on top of the Red Hat OpenShift where you can use the containerization. So essentially what it provides, it's, it provides a uh, tight collaboration on the data platform on the hybrid cloud. It's open source, of course, um, and all in one place on OpenShift. And it's very easy to install, which can be done through Operator Hub on OpenShift. Uh, so in my talk, obviously, I'm going to be using Open Data Hub um, to deploy a Jupyter Notebook. So essentially, I'm going to talk here uh, on the background on how we're going to distribute uh, the machine learning work flow across several nodes, right? So this is a little bit of a background where it's going to happen. It will be on the OpenShift. And on the OpenShift, we need to install uh, the Open Data Hub and NVIDIA GPU operator to use the GPUs, which can be easily done via Operator Hub. And Qflow can be installed via Open Data Hub. And eventually, you would uh, launch a Jupyter Notebook uh, with Open Data Hub. Uh, all of these steps I'm not going to show in my demo today, but I, am in, uh, I will include the resources at the end um, kind of explaining how to do that, uh, how one can uh, launch a Jupyter Notebook via Open Data Hub. And after we have launched the Jupyter Notebook, essentially it will be almost like a terminal for us. Using the Jupyter Notebook, we're going to deploy containerized machine learning training in, uh, written in PyTorch script. And the, this machine learning training will be distributed uh, with Qflow. Like it's a, there's a uh, custom resource definition called PyTorch job that's going to, in Qflow, that will distribute the data set, right? We have a data set of, let's say, 10,000 images. It's going to distribute them equally across all GPUs. So, for example, if we have a, two computers or two nodes with each GPU each, so we can see here two GPUs on one computer. In total, we have four GPUs, right? And what Qflow is going to do, it's going to, distribute the data equally across all four GPUs and on each GPU is going to create a pod and it's going to analyze that set of data and it's going to cop copy the machine learning model on each pod and that training is going to run on a section of that data right on each on uh, GPU. So essentially you're running all of this in parallel so your um, machine learning training is accelerated this way. And now I'm going to show the demo of that. But before I dive into my demo, I wanted to kind of more cover on the architecture or on where I'm running uh, this demo. So I'm running it on a cluster that has a lot of CPU nodes, actually, and only two GPU nodes. So the two GPU, GPU nodes that we have on the cluster have four GPUs on each node. So in total, we have eight GPUs available to us. And these GPUs are NVIDIA Tesla T4s. And on top of the cluster, we have Red Hat OpenShift dedicated installed, which um, it has already a pre-installed Open Data Hub, Qflow, and NVIDIA, NVIDIA GPU operator. And from that, we launch a Jupyter Notebook. And that's where the demo will start, from a Jupyter Notebook. And with the Jupyter Notebook, I'm going to show you how to um, deploy the pods or how to deploy um, distributed machine learning model uh, or training across um, eight, GPU, eight, eight GPUs that are distributed on two nodes. And now I'm going to switch to the demo, I think. let me do that, Chrome tab. Uh, can you guys all see that? Okay. 
So here uh, we have our cluster. Uh, we are in the project called distributed Pi. Our cluster already has two nodes with uh, four GPUs each. So in total, we have eight GPUs available to us. And here I have already a Jupyter notebook opened up. So essentially, as I mentioned earlier, Jupyter notebook here is almost like a terminal with instructions that are intended for data scientists or the engineers that want to train their model across several GPUs. So in this case, uh, first, what we need to do is to create this YAML file. What in this YAML file we're doing is we're telling we're um, taking the PyTorch job custom resource definition from Kubeflow, um, and what Kubeflow is going to do, it's going to request uh, the resources from the scheduler. Um, and uh, here we have, um, in terms of resources, we're requesting GPUs, right? So we have eight GPUs in total, and one of them has to be assigned a master pod. So a master pod requ requires one GPU, and then the rest are going to be workers. So we have seven workers, um, each requesting one GPU each. So in total, we're going to be using eight GPUs. And what master pod is essentially going to do, it's going to act as a reference. So that's where uh, the data distribution is going to initialize, and that's where all the other workers are going to report to, so to say. Um, so workers here are used for computing or for training, but master as well is used for computing as well. So in total, we have eight GPUs that are going to be training the model. So then here we go. We uh, pull uh, an image, uh, which is located here. And now let me go into more into the image, what we do there. So here we have the Docker file for that image where we have a UBI with CUDA installed in it. We also install the Python in the container and also we install um, the PyTorch and all the necessary dependencies using the PEEP3. Um, we're also copying the script, the uh, PyTorch script into our um, image and we directly execute it within the container, within the image um, by using this entry point. And now let's look at our PyTorch uh, script. So here, the important part here, which I'm going to mention a little later, is this master address, master port, rank, and world size, which is actually defined or passed on by Qflow, this, this information that is needed. So uh, this information, we need to know which GPUs we're running on and how many GPUs we're running on. So uh, you would see world size is the number of GPUs that we have. Master address is uh, and master port is uh, their information in terms of the IP address and port and rank in a sense where if you have eight GPUs, you need to rank them from zero to seven. And that will be done by Kubeflow and is passed on to PyTorch here. And so here we can see that we're creating a convolutional net um, model. Um, the convolutional net, uh, net, we have two layers and then uh, we go into the training. And here the two important parts of this script is the dist init process group and the distributed data parallel, also called DDP. So this init process basically initializes the process with a backend and CCO, which is recommended for GPUs. Uh, for CPUs, you can use something like glue, and uh, there was one MPI. And um, then what we do is um, then we wrap the model around this distributed data parallel, and we're kind of telling it um, what model we want to use, and also uh, what are the device, like where should it look for the master. Uh, pod or master GPU. This is the information we're feeding it in. So what uh, DDP is going to do, it's going to distribute that um, data set or uh, the data into chunks and distribute it equally among all GPUs. And the rest is where we download the data set, we load it, and here we actually run them um, the training, and then we uh, record the losses, and we print them. So with epoch step and loss in here. And we're going to do 20 epochs. And this is the uh, environment variables that I mentioned earlier. And then we train the model. So now that we have famili familiarized ourselves with the um, image that we're going to be using and how the code is going to be, or script is going to be executed, um, then we need to log it into the cluster. So you would need to update this information with your cluster. And you can obtain it through uh, going to command line tools. Uh, and copy command line tool, you log in again, and then you just do display token, it's going to show you this exact um, command here. Here, let's just go back. And then uh, we're going to go into a distributed um, Pi project, which we're already in. Um, and then we're just going to uh, execute this YAML file that we wrote earlier, right? 
And we can see that the eight pods are actually created. So here we have the master pod and we have like this, uh, the seven workers. So in total, we have eight pods that are working. And here with this command, we can see um, from the NVIDIA side, uh, if GPUs are used or not. So right now we can see they're um, not really used as much, but now they're being used. Um, it's downloading the data and we can go into the logs and uh, we can see that it's downloading the data right now or the data set. So sometimes it does go to wrong links and it's not able to, to download and then goes to a different one and eventually actually works. So uh, sometimes it takes a long time, sometimes it's very short. So now we can see that it's actually running and uh, we can see that all GPUs are equally being used. And meanwhile, we're going through each epoch with a new data set. And we can see that all the GPUs are being used, some of them up to 100%, some of them 49%. And when it's complete, we can see that the utilization goes down to zero. And here we can see that it took on this specific uh, pod or in this specific worker, it took 20.4 uh, seconds to complete this in uh, 20 epochs. And then we go to the master, for example, and the master it took roughly one minute and 22 seconds, uh, uh, one minute and 11 seconds. And that's probably, it's, it's more probably because of the overhead that it has of, um, as a master. We can also, we also have a few other functions here. If we want to look at the, um, basically instead of looking at them from the dashboard here, we can also kind of get this information here as well, like that all eight pods are running or completed. And then we can actually get these logs uh, down here as well. We just need to update that uh, part with this part. Um, and then uh, the other important thing that I wanted to show is that this environment though. So remember I was uh, mentioning that Qflow uh, or sorry, PyTorch uh, script needs all this information such as master port, master address and world size. And this is where it's actually set. You can see in the environment of the pod, these values are obtained by the Qflow and fed into the PyTorch. And the same we can see from uh, a worker number four, um, we can see that its rank is four and the total number of GPUs that we're using is the eight. Um, and then once we're done, we can just delete uh, all the resources that we, um, we don't need anymore and delete the project as well. Um, and that should be it. Uh, yeah, now that the demo has been demonstrated, I just wanted to um, suggest additional resources for installation of the ODH, Qflow, and NVIDIA operator, and also how to uh, initiate a Jupyter Hub notebook with ODH. I'd also like to thank uh, Diane from my team and Tanim for helping me out with the project a lot, and also separately to Joanna and Sanjay uh, for giving me a lot of insights and tips on Qflow and um, PyTorch in general. And with that, I'd like to conclude my presentation and take any questions that you guys may have. Thank you very Thank much. You very much. Um, uh, let me know if the audience have any question. You can write in the Q and A box or in any any chat. I'm also linking the breakout room link, so you can further discuss with the speaker in this link as well. Uh, yeah, so I don't think we have any questions as of now. So yeah, thank you very much, Selfie. Uh, Selby. Uh, yeah, thank Sounds you. Sounds good. Thank you, guys. Thank you.